Welcome to Continent Media Group channel. I am Oksana Davida and I'm very happy to introduce my guest, Mr. Glenn Grant, defense expert, diplomat um, uh, from Baltic Security Foundation and uh, my friend, can I say? Uh, nice to see you again, sir. Good evening. Thank you. It's lovely, Oksana. Thank you. Uh, 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 sir, I was very, very impressed with your late article you published a couple of weeks ago, and it's all about 2023 and, of course, future of Ukrainian war with Russia. And I just want to highlight some topics of this article for our viewers, and I will just quote a few of your things you said and it's really very impressive how you see the future of this war and how you see the great way to improve quality of action from ukrainian side of course so 12 months into the post 24 february invasion the zsu have produced amazing combat results the so armed force of Ukraine. And despite the victories and amazing stubborn defenses in places like Bakhmut, not all is good with the management, of course, uh, of the Ukrainian conduct of war. Despite the maxim of we trust in the ZSU, this organization cannot be perfect, having grown and changed so dramatically in such a short time. So do you think it's really possible quickly to implement those changes into new army culture, every life matters, to implement really, really fast? Uh, I think you can make some changes. I mean, the, the, the biggest, and, and you can make some quickly. And the, the first one is actually making it clear from leadership, uh, from, from right the way down from Zelensky, Zeluzhny, and the other generals that lives are not to be wasted. I mean, this is that so far, nobody has actually said this. You know, nobody's actually coming out and saying, you know, we've got to save life. You've got to be careful. You've got to fight clever. Now, 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 these things are not coming out. And, and, and this is important because generals, colonels, lieutenant colonels on the way down need to know that, you know, life is important for one simple reason. Dead men can't fight. Every time you lose a soldier, it costs the country a huge amount of, of treasure because you, you're not just costing a, a person and the family, which, of course, downstream means all those problems for the next 30, 40 years. Um, uh, the problems with, you know, family and schooling and, and, and the heritage of father or mother or even both having died. But you also, you've got to find another soldier, which means that you've got to find another soldier and train him. And so it doesn't make any sense. If you don't have to have someone die, you must not let them die. Um, and th there's, a, uh, you know, th there's been a political decision made. OK, we stand in Bakhmut. The trouble is that that is expensive. And I'm not sure that really when we made the decision of standing in Bakhmut, that there was an understanding of what that would do to the armed forces and is doing to the armed forces every day. You know, huge amounts, more casualties, huge amounts of skilled and clever people lost. So I go back to what I said. It, the, the armed forces need a very clear line that, you know, you, you, you don't let people die if you don't have to because you need them for tomorrow. And the big the big fights are still to come. So it, it's you know you can't you can't win a war with Russia just by killing people on the other side. There are too many of them. You have to beat them by being clever, not just by killing one, two, one, two, one, two. That doesn't work. Russia is defeated by getting behind them, capturing them, and making them run away, not by killing. The evidence is stark. Just go back and look at Second World War. Look at the Polish-Russian War. Yes, you're right. Uh, we're talking about quality, not quantity only. And exactly you mentioned that uh, the ZSU lacks a policy of one army concept. It means the battle commander under the fire is a king. I, I like how you said it. Not only senior officer. And it goes along with NATO standards. So 
it's very difficult to understand that NATO standard for our army, of course, and have to change the old mentality quickly again because life, every life matters. I mean, there was there was a change. I mean, there was a much, a, quite a strong change during the the the, the, the period of defence. You know, twenty fourteen fifteen. Sorry, twenty fifteen through till twenty twenty two, when when the, the, you could say that the generals let the, the 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 brigade commanders get on with the battle. Um, but there, there's there's much more uh, or much less of this now than there's been before. Um, and and I mean, even some brigades that have been fighting are, are being split up, which is which is a, not a NATO standard. You don't split your organizations up unless you have to, um, because the moment you, you do that, you 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 change the dynamics, you change the power of the organization. So that, that that's thing that the one army concept that I was speaking about it applies wider than than just that. And it's. It's that you know you can't just have or you shouldn't just have territorial forces uh um air mobile forces and army and now the national guard there should be one common standard and that should be the best standard and I noticed that that you know in in the, the argument or backing up my argument that the uh, Mariana Bajugla, uh, who's in the a member of parliament actually said that that the the uh, National Guard forces that are being created at the moment have a much greater understanding of training and the value of life than the army does. And that that says to me that, you know, there is something wrong in the way that the army generals are actually looking at it. And you can read this every day, that there are a lot of commanders who are who see the territorials not as part of the army, even though they're on the front line, even though they're next door to them. Or under their command, they still see them as a uh, second division, or not quite the same as us, sort of thing. And you can't have that in a war. Everybody's got to be looked after. Everybody's got to be treated the same. Everybody's got to be trained properly. Uh, and it, it, you know, the the the, um, the commander of the air mobile forces was was talking last week, and he said, you know, all our soldiers have had, but you know, at least a month or two months training. What, a month or two months? <laughs> First of all, that's a huge difference, a month or two months. it's. It, it, I mean, a recruit in most countries, in almost every country, gets 14 weeks. Okay, that's a recruit. That's that's before he leaves recruit training. That is, <clears throat> that is without company training, without platoon training, without company training, without battalion training, without brigade training. So the larger part of the training hasn't even started after the 14 weeks. Infantrymen in Britain, they do 14 weeks basic training. Then they do about the same amount of time infantry training. So that's like 28 weeks before you're an infantryman, a basic infantryman. And here we're about one month to two months. But worse, some of the, <clears throat> some of the volunteer battalions have gone to the front with less than a week of training. Think how long people take to train a bus driver. And here we are talking about a war, people going to the front with five days. And of course, what happens? They either they die or they some of them run away. And I don't blame them if they're untrained. Um, but but unfortunately, quite a lot of them die. Um, and and this is this is this is a real problem. Because there is no one army. There's no one army concept. There's no common standard. There's no common standard for training. Now, you could say that they have great difficulty doing this because they're all so busy. But that isn't necessarily true. Um, they, they're, they're busy in a way because they're, they're not sitting down and thinking how to do it. If you follow me, you know, you have to think yes. to, to buy time. You have to think to buy time. You have to actually to, to make decisions and make policies, which is what I'm talking about, is make policies to buy time. One of those policies is you have to bring some of the best people back from the front line to do the training. Because if you don't bring the best people back, then the people that are being trained are not good enough when they go to the front line. So more die. Then you need more people. So it's like a vicious circle. You know, if, the, if this war isn't going to go on for maybe another two years, 
then that circle, that vicious circle, has to be broken at some stage. And you can't just break it by giving soldiers to the Americans and giving soldiers to the British, because that, that is only a small percentage of those people in the whole defence forces. Um, so there is a need for Ukraine to almost to, to grasp what is being done by America and Britain and reproduce it inside the country. That doesn't seem to be happening very much. Yes. So you think uh, many of those problems you mentioned are still connected to that old Soviet mentality and bureaucracy in our Ukrainian army? Because we still yes, have yes. many commanders um, from that time, and I don't think they have time. They had time and they had uh, enough creativity to change uh, rules in our army to new modern rules of, for example, NATO. Because I remember you you have your opinion about that crazy law 8271. Yeah, and you yeah. mentioned that example of a four-week delay on um, delivery on some drones from abroad because, yeah. because that signature from Minister of Defense was delayed in few weeks how it can be possible it has to be like you said 12 hours and it's well, probably I mean, connected it, it, to yeah you're right you're right but i mean th this is this is also because there's still a lot of paper bureaucracy i mean one of my friends is 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 forever writing to me about the uh, the papers that he has to fill in every day basically which are just saying the same as he filled in yesterday and the same as he filled in the day before and of course that uses his time and if as an officer if he's filling in papers, he's not organizing training. <laughs> you know, so there is a direct linkage with, you know, you could call it direct linkage with stupidity, with failure. Um, you know, when you're doing doing things that you don't need to do at any stage, whether that's all the way through from the Ministry of Defense, right the way down through to battalions and platoons, is that every time you take the, the, the officer is engaged in bureaucracy, he is not engaged in fighting. I mean, even there are problems with many things that are bureaucratic still. And, and it, one hopes that, that someone will actually try and remove these, but they don't. And, and when I say that, you know, I go back this, to jump back to the last thing about, you know, they'll say they haven't got anybody to do this. Well, the last but one chief of defense, Muzhenko, is currently sitting at home. So he was in the planning. He was in the, in the planning cell. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is not not for me to judge. But he was in the planning cell from February till April. But he could have been made commander training. You know, he's he's been a chief of defense. He's got the experience. He's got the so he could have been made chief, commander training. He could have been made commander remove bu bureaucracy yeah. and get and let's get, you know, tablet, get everything on tablets. I mean, you may or may not have read about the pay issue. Um, where some of the soldiers in the front, everybody was given a, a, a bonus in the army. Because when yeah. you get towards a million person bonus, it becomes impossible. And so they actually removed the uh, the bonus from a lot of people. Um, and the rules that they've made for the bonus uh, effectively mean that, that commanding officers and brigade commanders have got to say who is in the battle area. Well, if you have to do that every day, for every day, yeah. Someone has got to do that. Well, I know one of my friends is doing it and it's an onerous task. And it means an experienced captain who's actually been in the who've been in the army effectively since I must think when I first met him about 2016 is wasted putting ticks in boxes about who's in the front line to get the money. Now, we could have put all this onto a tablet. Any time in the last nine years certainly in the last 12 months with all the IT people that we've got around and serving in the army, there's enough of them to write an app 50 times over and put it on there for, for something simple like this. But it doesn't happen. And that is that is a problem, whether it's intentional, whether it's just that the people that are, are doing the work can't have don't have the ability as as, as senior officers to step back and look at things wider. That is what I think it is. They're, they're, they're so used to, historically in Soviet terms to making decisions all the time that they're not used to making thinking. 
to step back, change policies. Policies need to be changed of why we do this, why we do that. We should do this, change the policy and make sure that everybody knows that this is how it's going to happen. That doesn't happen. I will go back to the money on one thing and just say that actually one of the soldiers I know is in the front line in Kirsten and being shot at. He and his fellows are being shot at. Are there being aircraft overtaking them? Rocket launchers from the other side of the of the river, artillery from the other side of the river. They do not get the bonus because they're not being shot at by rifles. However, the brigade headquarters behind them, the staff in there are getting the bonus. So what does that do for leadership? What does that tell you about the, the quality of the brigade commander? A lot. And that's just one brigade that I know. I haven't checked with any others. But if the first one I check is like that, then that worries me greatly. So there's these things are still some of them have still got to change because they are the they're the they're the you know the the boils on the, on on what is otherwise a really really good working system in many places, but you can't afford to have these stupidities. Yeah, and especially after soldiers hear about those huge scandals, money scandals, yes. with Minister of Defense about high prices on eggs, it's almost like oh, yeah. anecdotic now Potatoes. and everything. Potatoes, three times more. Yes, yes. More, and from the other more. hand, they experience, oh, they're going to cut my pay, my, my yeah. salary, my earning. Like, how, how to explain that? It, it doesn't well, work well for moral um, no. condition of soldiers. But I'm not sure that, that if you go to the Ministry of Defence or all the general staff, apart from Zaluzhny, that there is an understanding of the moral component at all. Um, I, I don't feel it because I, I go back. If the, if, the, if the moral component was understood, then there will be a lot more changes in the way people spoke, in the way people acted, and in, in, the, in the, the way that they, in the conditions that they created. So I don't think that the moral component has really sunk into the system, um, and which is which is which is a pity. But having said that, you know, despite the moral bit, uh, the, the the soldiers on the front line are doing everything that they can despite the problems, not because not because yes. of the good things, but despite <clears throat> the problems. And you know, those that I talk to, then they're not losing heart. They're not losing hope they're 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 not they're not even um they're not even saying very much but when they do speak you can feel that there is an inner anger with some of them that is because they are unhappy about some of these things um especially those who were getting a hundred thousand uh, uh grievna and now are getting thirty thousand yeah and who need the money for their wives because they're away and then no longer the breadwinner so the, 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 those those are and apparently some are trying to leave now because they need to find jobs where they can earn a bit more money to, to look after you know especially those with three kids or or four kids um uh, so so uh, there, there are tensions in there that are, are quite difficult and that is one of the reasons why i wrote because i wanted to bring some of these things to to to, to before they get worse and to provide solutions for for how people can actually address the problem and what they yeah. can do to it. Uh, talking about problem, uh, moral problems, I just uh, unexpectedly half an hour ago when I was getting ready, I was listening to an uh, interview with uh, General Krivonos. I think you know him, and he was my I guest know him a few well, times. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And last, uh, last time, sorry, I have to say this. Last time I saw him, it was in McDonald's in Kiev. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I was uh, pleasantly surprised. He mentioned, like, finally, one after one year when the war, war started, he got, um, how you call in English, that he was drafted, like he got uh, that uh, oh. um, paper to go to to check to the army. His, <laughs> his status. Yes. So I am very happy he absolutely he's going to be very useful. But what he said, he said, yeah, I was happy to be there. I talked to personal and I could see young people, young, not very young, who was in line with me. And he said, I was disappointed by moral 
level of those people it was totally different from a year ago when you could see like half of my line into this office and people were full of hope full of energy full of um, just passion now it's totally different because ah, but, but it's this is interesting and uh, i'm glad you raised this because it is totally different to in the national guard to the five brigades they have an overwhelming number of people volunteering to join the five brigades in the national guard now this is something that the government should actually be looking at and trying to say why why is it that we don't we have a problem people wanting to go in the army but we don't have a problem with people wanting to go in the national guard and this is this is you know these are these are really significant things because the national guard is asking for people to 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 actually to you know go go into the rough stuff and 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 reclaim crimea and reclaim everything else and i think that, that you know that what what privenos is talking about is real obviously because he's he's got the eye for for these things having been special forces he knows what he knows what a motivated soldier is um uh, and and you know th th this this should be something that is of public debate and political debate because you know the the as i say that the figures are stark for the national guard start and they 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 they're testing people and turning people away whereas the army is short so you know the reasons for that need to be pulled out and actually investigated and for the army cured yes yes you're absolutely right and one of topics you touch in your article is um, importance of good diplomacy during the war and actually it's a very interesting topic because as you said for example in time of civil war war for independence here in the united states um, uh, president was sent uh, he was uh, he was sending very important prominent politicians yeah. senior politician to be ambassadors in different countries uh, with mission to raise money to talk about war yeah. to organize some uh, weapon production and actually it worked very well it was very wise and very smart but now it looks almost funny but actually it's scary how ukrainian diplomacy works around the world so what examples we have in such important time you know that probably scandal with new bulgarian oh yes i do lady yeah. lady ambassador who is it's a joke and because of that we lost important connection with bulgarian government bulgaria as a country because it was very important now it changed so the same we have with Switzerland. Yeah, we have very scandalic and very dark person that ex prosecutor Benediktova, yeah. and she is not doing any real good job. So uh, actually, I don't know if it has connection to war or not, but it's just telling us how bad quality of those choices about um, Jordan, Ukrainian ambassador in Jordan in that country where role of women you, you know how it works everything mm. is built on connection not private uh, coffee drinks conversation it's a country of strong men and they sent i'm sorry to say maybe she's a good professional but redhead woman in jordan is not going to do any private no. connections and it just no. doesn't work well no. we don't have any uh, ambassador in china till now and no the most I, I even don't know how to say the most terrible uh, choice it's uh, ambassador of ukraine in united states because we talk about it many times she's not even helping ukraine instead to raise money instead to help to 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 do something to to buy to organize uh, weapon production she is doing the totally opposite she's against land lease she's interacting with our uh, american citizen telling no no not to talk about it not to support that so and she's supporting buying weapon for ukrainian money for money we getting from united states and even not a good price for that process so why do you think we have such a mess in ukrainian diplomacy because 
everybody talk about diplomatic way to end this war and we hear it more and more and now what we have is level and quality of diplomacy why that is a really good question um i mean the, the going back to the uh, to, to the american uh the american war of independence of course you actually sent the founding fathers abroad i mean it wasn't just anybody i mean it was the it was the, the the most important people in the country were sent abroad to 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 raise money uh and to 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 be diplomatic for 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 the war against great britain which of course you won um uh, <laughs> but uh, and we lost um rightly so i should say but but it's very strange because i mean w- w- what has happened in inside ukraine is that the the ministry of foreign affairs has been sidelined um and is no the minister is is no longer effectively the minister of foreign affairs um and that 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 role has been taken over by zelensky himself and by ermak um and they seem to uh they seem to control everything now you know the selections are, are, are strange even for even for them i have to say this and it's almost as though the selections you know we're choosing people that deliberately so that we don't have any proper relations with anybody else um i mean that may that that's probably going too far on my part it's far more likely that they simply don't understand what diplomacy is what a diplomat is there to do in wartime um and uh, so there's no power coming out of the uh, uh no power coming out of the embassies and and i can uh, you know i can feel that even even in 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 the uh in the baltic region um and uh, and that's a pity that is that is a pity uh now maybe it will change maybe it will improve but i think that that you know society ukrainian society understands this and is starting to actually to not just to ask sharp questions but to put it publicly that this is not good enough this is not good enough i i'm just not sure whether zelensky uh, has has the grasp of this because he is a he he thinks that he's the person to do all these relationships but of course you know like today you know i mean you could say he's actually wasting his time with actors and people uh rather than rather than actually getting at he gets at the heads of countries but you know diplomacy is m- not just about that as you know i mean it's about talking to senior officials it's about being public uh going on television and talking and 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 writing articles for the newspapers and <laughs> one laughs but you know going around schools and being positive in schools so that they all go home and tell their mums and dads that it's it's this building a consensus that of of how important it is to support ukraine uh, and and in many countries that just is simply not happening or if it does happen it's happening in a in a weak fashion um so yeah it's a worry it's a worry and and let's see what you know let's see how it changes in terms of you know china and the fu- the future uh countries but but it, 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 it it's you know it, it's historic in, in some ways in the soviet union where you use where you don't have really diplomacy because there's no need to talk to anybody else so you use the diplomatic posts as as a thank you for people for for being loyal to you and to keep their loyalty but you know during a war that is no good that is not what you want You want yeah. the best Actually, people. you uh, thank you. You mentioned China's role right now, and after last events, what we see, it looks like whole world was growing that monster in the face of Putin and uh, probably China too, because now all the world is looking what's going to happen, what uh, what good or bad news we're going to have from that part of a world and it's still not clear how china is going to rule that problem right now which side they're going to take but i think we see which side and uh, remember our first interview my question was why west really doesn't want to help ukraine to will win this war dramatically because honestly in the beginning of war first months even i personally i was it's strange to say but i was in a more kind of optimistic mood because yeah it's gonna 
and very soon it cannot last for long maybe months maybe two all world should understand what's mm -hmm. going on all world should know who is on the right side of course it's ukraine what we see now personally i'm much more depressed and pessimistic today than i was maybe 10 months ago so what do you think the same question how is your opinion change why we see what we see right now they ask us to think about diplomacy in this possible victory but we know it's not going to be perfect victory anymore like we thought 10 months ago no. so I, it, it, no, no, it may still be. It may still be. Don't under don't underestimate the the you know the Ukrainian will to to do this, and, and the, there's still some strong support around, even if it is a bit slower than than they want it to be. Um, uh, and in I don't see, I don't see the support, uh, getting less. I see it slowing. But I think that's because we're now digging into more difficult areas in those countries. Um, you know, and what we're, what we're seeing now is is the the actual the weaknesses of those countries in their own systems, because they're now loading the system like the system for making sure that all the Abrams tanks are ready to actually to go to the front line. Well, the system is, you know, challenged because they've also promised Abrams to other countries. And there's probably only one factory able to fix abrams so countries like us are still frightened i think of saying right we need to build another abrams factory we need to we need to double and treble the output on on this on the, this and this and this and it, it's it's almost being left to industry to say what industry can do um, and rhyme metal, rhyme metal have been outstanding. I mean, you, you cut from the beginning of the war, rhyme metal have been the biggest and most pro uh, company uh, to, to support Ukraine of anybody. And and I think they've even actually sort of said they would do things for free in some cases, just to actually to take some of the German equipment and get it onto the front line. So there's 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 you know it, it, there are people that are actually really serious about this. But but if you take it overall then the movement has been slow. I mean, I, I, I listened to Burrell, the, the uh, security chief for the EU, and he was talking about, you know, we're going to put money on this. I have a plan A, plan B, plan C. And he talked about how much money effective is a lot of money. I mean, a billion euros, a billion euros. And and then he, he killed it at the end by saying, and of course, now there'll have to be negotiations and uh, discussions about this. And I, I just, I, I almost died. I mean, you know, what's wrong with doing something in 24 hours, even with all the countries? Why not just say, we're going to do this. All of you who are with us, say you're with us by tomorrow morning. Then we'll have discussions with the others. Not wait till we have discussions with everybody to do something. I mean, there is no grasp of the of urgency, the sense of urgency that was driven into me, a young officer that you don't waste time, you break the rules, you don't, you know, if the law says you can't do it and you know you need to do it, you do it and argue afterwards. That sense of urgency, apart from, I'm going to say, apart from probably the frontline states, the Baltics, Poland, UK, Slovakia, Czech Republic, apart from them, that sense of urgency is completely absent. And it's very absent in America. There is no sense of urgency. And and there, and not only is there no sense of urgency, there seems to be no um, self-reflection about the lack of sense of urgency, about why is this taking so long? Why are we doing this? I mean, it, limiting the number of people who can be in Kiev. So what are they limiting? The person who should be there working in the Ministry of Defence is not there because she can't go because they've got a limit on numbers. So the help that is actually required, what's that, you know, uh, that all support except help line, uh, there's no, doesn't seem to be any analysis or self-reflection about sense of urgency. Yeah. And, and of course, without sense of urgency, every day Ukrainian soldiers are dying and the effectiveness of the Ukrainian armed forces drops accordingly. 
many conservative Americans and of course myself, we still think we criticize way of White House is doing all what they need to do and we criticize Biden. I still think he's not doing enough. His agenda is still somehow to save face of Putin and even late news. Uh, he support not doing official tribunal like it was before. He said, oh, well, if it happens, if it needs to be done, it needs to be done. Um, in Ukraine by Ukrainian law. So he wants to kind of separate war crime of Putin uh, and put it only to uh, jurisdiction yeah. of Ukraine. It's like he doesn't want whole world to hear about that. And for me, it looks like he still wants to save Putin's face. And if, if you look at those square miles of storage in Arizona, California, Nevada, yeah. Yeah. we still have a lot it could be sent through land lease program. And, and not only a lot, it's a lot of stuff that you're never going to use. <laughs> you're never going to use it because you've gone past those days technologically and militarily mm -hmm. when that stuff is of value to you as the US, the way you fight, the way you want to fight. It's not going to be used. It's just dying there. And all of it could have been, a lot more of it could have been moved over to Ukraine and it would have made a fundamental change. Why Biden says that thing about that the um, uh, about Putin, I don't know. I mean, that, that that's bizarre to me, and it's br and it brings him. It will bring him into direct conflict with yes. the other countries that say, uh, under no circumstances is this man to get away with this. I mean, he mustn't get away with child murder. He mustn't do. He, and and for Biden to do that, then you start asking, well, what's in the background of the of, of people in the White House? You know, is there is there Russian money there? That yes, that we don't know about is there Russian? I don't know, but and, and and I'm going to say in bipartisan terms, if there's money in in America, it's on both sides because Russia doesn't do things on one side; it does everybody, and so you can you know it won't just be in the White House that someone's tainted, it will be everywhere that you look, people are tainted. And certainly, you know, there are a lot of countries, uh, my, own my own included, that have actually got to do some hard thinking and, and reflection about the Russian money that came. I mean, I was on, you know, just listening to a programme. And I mean, London is awash still with Russian money. Yeah. And they're still trying to actually now to get at another law because we made a law of 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 trying to actually to say if you've got money you have to sh Russian foreign you've got to show us where the money came from and I think they've they've actually sort of um, put about two people in court, which of course is mm -hmm. a, a nonsense. Uh, but now they realise that, so now they're going to try and change change the the law to actually to make it stronger, to give it teeth, and to try and actually sort out some of this huge amount of Russian money floating around London. But you know, hey, how much is there in Switzerland? Yeah. Obviously, from the way their Swiss are behaving, not very much. Yeah. Uh, sir, and my last question about very painful problem for Ukraine. And again, it goes from White House. Why do you think Mr. Biden doesn't keep his promise and he doesn't follow the law of land lease, which was supported by Congress and actually supported by us, by American citizens, uh, taxpayers. Why it's like, like persona non grata can be, you know, that uh, yeah. uh, expression and that law, it's like non grata law. Why nobody is doing nothing? Why nobody is even allowed to speak? One, that subject disappeared from diplomacy and politics in the United States and even in Ukraine. It's like they were given order shut up, don't speak about it, don't mention it, it's not going to happen. It's like that pregnancy, nothing is going to be born. Why? Ukraine is in, in such a need of that right now. It could be so good to have that line of help. And again, it's a law approved by Congress. Why he's not doing it's that? A very, I mean, it's a, very, it's a very good question. You're asking a very good question. Uh, I mean, I... I mean, you've got you've got the one side that they simply don't want to do it to 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 upset Russia, um, and to to allow Ukraine to win easily or quickly, um, because people are not actually 
mentally ready for anything that happens in Russia. I mean, my feeling on that is that the Biden and the White House want Russia to be as it was before, only with a new leader, and then we'll sort it all out afterwards. Well, that isn't going to happen. That isn't going to happen. And and he's underestimating Europe, uh, the resolve of, of the Eastern Europeans, and he's underestimating Ukraine if he thinks that that will be acceptable to people, because I don't think it will. Um, because I mean, and if we did that, they're only going to be back in 10 years or eight years anyway. So it'll it'll we'll just have the same problem that we have from 2014 of, of, a, 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 of a, a saw that is too small for America to, you know, a tooth, bad tooth that's too sore for America to go to the dentist, but but is sore enough to, to make you uncomfortable. You know, it's that sort of thing. Um, the other thing could just be plain control. That, that if they have lend lease, then then the, the genie is out of the bottle with what goes, and America wants to control everything and control the the whole action and and something like that. And I wouldn't underestimate that because there are you know there are people in the system that are control freaks, and 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 can't possibly will always find an excuse for something that is not quite as we want it, um, and it may be a combination of both of those. Um, I, I sincerely hope that it's not it's not a pro-Russian act, though. I really do hope that. Um, but, you know, but the it, longer it drags on, the longer it drags on, the more you have to start asking. And yes. the more people should start asking, you know, what, what what's the game? Um, yeah. You know, I mean, Biden was put under pressure. Uh, let's wear March, April time, wasn't he? Quite heavily, you know, get your yeah. act together and start doing things. And it may well be that, that you know, that, public have got to start putting him under pressure again for you know because you're not delivering enough and uh, see what happens and i forgot about a little question i wanted to ask you uh, boris johnson uh, announced when he was prime minister his great idea about supporting um uh, uh, they call it union of ukraine great britain and poland do you have any input what's going on with this that idea because it looks like it could be a really great solution even to help to win this war and especially for future especially with kind of nato weakness we experiencing right now so that idea is still alive can you make a call to boris johnson and ask him no, he's, or maybe you already know boris is under deep pressure from the Conservative Party 1922 com Committee, uh, that he may have misled Parliament uh, and the Standards Committee in Parliament, that he misled Parliament about parties during COVID time. Uh, and he is struggling um, because he obviously did mislead Parliament about it. Um, and everybody knows he did. Um, and so he could be in a bit of trouble. As for the UK, Poland, Ukraine sort of axis, well, I think it's working at the moment. I'm not sure we could actually do much more than, well, I mean, Poland can't do any more than it's doing at the moment for 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 Ukraine, really. I mean, it's it's given it's you know it's giving all it can because it knows it's next, basically. Uh, if 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 this goes down, they're in trouble and they know it. But um, now it looks like those countries are dating, friendship. But what do you think about official marriage? It could be really efficient. It could be oh, a really great idea for, like, we're so strong. we doing everything together according to new situation. I think there's, got, there's a lot of work to be done on something like that still. Because, because UK is still outside of the European Union now. And therefore, there's there's you know there's a lot of relationship things that that have to happen, and and there's there's work that is taking place now about you know what what's the future of European defence and things like that. So it would be um, it would be uh, let's just say awkward if everybody jumped into something that was structural or formal before everybody's had a chance to actually to think about what is the best way of doing this, because of course remember that 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 you know there's a serious amount of the British army is sitting in Estonia. Um, so it's not as though we're going to actually to, to, to pivot from Estonia down to Poland uh, in, in NATO terms or even European terms, because America, uh, you know, you have an American, German, Lithuanian, Polish block there. Um, so so the, the, 
it, what is going on at the moment with a huge amount of relationship work and a huge amount of, of military cooperation, I mean, it is huge. I mean, remember that all this stuff, lots of this training is taking place in Poland. Um, so Poland is already doing uh, more than its fair share, you could say. Um, uh, so I think we just have to wait on that. But but yeah, there is but there is it's there is stuff going on, and uh, you know I think Boris started something. Um, I don't think it's going to go away, at least not until the war's finished, mm -hmm. and then people will have to. Then there will be. I mean, after the war's finished, there will be a restructuring of alliances and shapes and battle and everything else. Um, either way. Remember, this could, could it could be either way. I mean, if Ukraine loses, there's going to have to be some serious NATO restructuring, because NATO is not balanced at the moment to fight Russia, uh, and it would have to become so. Yes, and it was built in the first place to fight Russia and Russian regime and communist regime, and they kind of not really good in that right now. Yeah. Well, we have to hope, we have to believe, and we have to trust, yeah. like you said. Trust the zoo. It's a great slogan and help in any way possible. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your great support, for being a friend of Ukraine, for, for your brain, for your everything you do and your energy. It's just really, really helpful. And we will uh, advert, advertise your article because uh, I just mentioned in the comment after I read that article, I feel like I'm doing my preparation to bachelor degree in art of war or military science. I don't know how to say it. it it's so management. easy to read. Defense management. Yes, it's so easy to read. It's very well done. And I'm sure it's going to be helping. I will share with all my friends uh, in Ukraine okay. and uh, it's going to be very helpful. Thank you, sir. Glenn okay. Grant was our guest today. Uh, Oksana Davida. Channel Continent. Thank you again. Glory to Ukraine. Slava Ukraini. And glory to heroes.